Father, I appreciate you. Father, we just thank you. There is all a lot. Thank you given unto us to be your rest, O Lord. Father, Lord, thank you for the power to wait upon you. Thank you, Father, Lord, because we are expectant, O Lord. Thank you for the strength, O Lord. Thank you for our hope in you and for what we are expecting. Father, be that exalt, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, today is uh, day eight. Please sit down, everybody. Thank you. Uh, Today is day 8, and it's Thursday, 9th of January, and the title is Grace and Power for prep, Proper Preparation for His Coming. Hmm. Our test shall be taken from Matthew 24, 44, Matthew 25, 1 to 4, and Revelation 16, 15. Uh, okay, it's on the board, and uh, we can read together. Therefore, you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Amen. Now, Matthew 25, 1 to 14. Midnight there was a cry made, Lo, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him, and all those virgins are ready, and trim their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Because of your words, we are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch, therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. For the kingdom of heaven is as a, a man traveling into a far country who called his soul servant and deliver unto them good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then the next one, the last one is uh, Revelation 16, 15. And we can read together too. Behold, I'm coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Praise the Lord. Um, the title already explained itself, that uh, grace and power for proper preparation for his coming. That's a hope. That's why we are Christians, apart from all the benefits that we're getting right here, that one day we're going to meet with Jesus, we're going to reign with Jesus. So is the ultimate, you know, why we are Christians. So mainly, this program, uh, this title, is for believers. So if we have anybody here who is not already born again and wants to give his life to Jesus, that would be very nice. Um, we can do that at the end of this message. But this is for Christians, so that we will know that we have to be. Ready, we have to be prepared. And we need the grace and the power to do it. We cannot do it of our own. Jesus has already paid the price for us. Okay, we believe in the, his death and resurrection and we gave our life to him. But we need to maintain it. And that's why the Bible says we should wa uh, watch our salvation with trembling. So we don't have to fall by the wayside. So now I'll read the inspirational message for effective prayer. Therefore, be also ready, for 
for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. This is the voice of Jesus. Certainly, Jesus is coming again for his church. This is the glorious hope of all true believers. Also, his last message and promise to the church is, Behold, I'm coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to render to every man according to what he has done. Revelation 22, verse 7. This calls for proper preparation of all heavenly-minded believers. Those who are prepared and ready to meet him will spend eternity with him. Those who fail to properly prepare or do not desire the things of God will end up in eternity without God. Concerning preparation for his coming, there are two groups, the wise ones and the foolish ones. The choice of which group you wish to belong is yours and is determined by the pedigree of your preparation. Equally, there are two things Jesus expects from us, physical and spiritual preparations. You must be fully prepared for his arrival. You must be ready for the day of his return. Knowing that no one knows the day or the hour of at which he will come back. Even Jesus Christ said it when they were asking, the disciples asked him. He said he doesn't know, it's only his father that knows the time and the date that he So we have to be fully prepared for his arrival. You must be ready for the day of his return, knowing that no one knows the day or the hour at which he will come back. When Jesus comes, is he going to find you in the position of the, fo uh, the foolish virgins or the wise virgins? We know the story of the, uh, the ten virgins. The ten virgins, they must be believers, or else I don't think they will be uh, getting prepared to meet their uh, groom. And so, but we have some foolish ones, and we have some wise ones. In the church today, we have people, majority, if you look at it, I might even say maybe 90 percent, or I don't have the statistics, but I know from my interaction with people, with myself and everything, I believe that maybe 90 percent of people are not ready, you know, for the coming of the Lord. And uh, I always ask myself this. Why would I go and be in the same place with Boko Haram people or be in the same place with all these people that looted all the wealth of uh, their nation? They already enjoyed. Then we have to go and suffer the same thing. It's a leveler. Hell is going to be a leveler. Everybody the same punishment. So why would I have to go and be in the same place with them? So people who are wise, they have to every day look into their life. Am I still in the race? Am I still in the faith? Am I still just coming to show off in church or to be there? Oh, you know, there was a time that born again was not a common thing in Nigeria or in the world. Now, the something, you know, everybody, I'm born again. Everybody is born again. Everybody is, but, you know, Jesus Christ knows his own children. So if you are not ready, you are one of those foolish virgins. If you are ready, you are one of the wise ones. And so... Get ready, get prepared, because it is real. Whatever Jesus Christ said, surely must come to pass. Today, life is so busy with many things. The distractions of the world are so strong, magnetic, and persistent, that one may take things for granted in a spiritual preparation. Many may miss his coming, like the five foolish virgins, because of procrastination, putting off intentionally and habitually some spiritual matters that must be settled timely and rightly. What is the issue that you ought to have said to biblically, but you are still postponing till tomorrow? That is deadly. Think it in your heart. What is it that you have said? Oh, I'm going to stop everything that I'm doing that is not of God. Okay, tomorrow. You don't know when uh, Jesus Christ will come. My own is that the day you die, your own Jesus Christ already came. Because the book is closed. You cannot add anything to it. You cannot remove from it. So... Uh, one thing is certain, for every man, the time of death is appointed. You might be lucky if Jesus Christ come now, 
rapture, and I hope the whole house of Chin will be able to rapture with Jesus. God will help us. <laughs> A life of complete and continuous victory over sin, any day, any time, will make you ready for him. That is victory over sin. A life that is properly prepared for his coming will be characterized with the following. No practice and parade of sin. No besetting sin. No secret sin. No unconfessed sin. No unconquered sin. No unforgiveness, no root of bitterness, and no loss of any kind. And that is in First John 3, 6 to 9. And radical separation from all manners of sin. What is radical? Total change of action, far-reaching and very thorough. That is separation from any manner of sin. This is deliberately and consciously separating yourself from anything that is wrong, sinful, worldly, defiling. Mark 9, 3 to 48. Hear Jesus' warning about his coming. Be careful, get ready, watch and pray. Mark 13, that is, take heed and watch and pray, for you know not when the time is when Jesus Christ will arrive. So you have to take it. Beloved, get ready for his coming. Hold fast to the truth of God's word. Patiently endure the difficulties and trials you may be facing. Read the Bible. Believe the Bible. Obey the Bible. Try out the Bible. Never add to the Bible. And never take away from the Bible. Walk in love. That is the uh, totality of any law. Because Jesus Christ even said, he said, love one another even as I have loved you. And that's the greatest thing. When you love, you know what it is to love. You don't even see any fault. You don't, you, when you see fault, you rationalize it in somebody. You don't hold it. So love is the absolute, absolute of everything. So do everything in love. Love all, not even one person, not your, your immediate family, not even unbelievers on the streets. We have to love them because one day we might be able to bring them to Jesus Christ is looking for them. So when you hate them, how do you penetrate them? How do you bring them into the kingdom of God? So, like um, Pastor told us yesterday about, um, I can't remember the name. <laughs> That uh, the man was preaching to his friend for 60 years. On the day he died, that's when the man uh, gave his life to Jesus. Because the man never gave up on him. You know, so, yeah, this one is beyond the uh, redemption. No? I don't care what the drunkard do. This one is a fornicator. This one is this, is that. You know, that's not what Jesus has called us to do. Jesus has called us to bring them, bring them, bring them, bring them. That's what our um, job is. And uh, this topic is about our own, getting ready. So it's one of those things that we have to do. We love Jesus Christ. We will love people that we want to bring to Christ. Don't step out of love. Live your life moment by moment under his lordship. Wait patiently for his coming. James 5, 7 to 9. Live what you believe. We, be, we believe in Jesus Christ. His ways of life. The book, the Bible gave us all, uh, um, we have all manner of scriptures on him. So that is our belief. We believe in him. So we should live in him. We should live Jesus Christ so that they will see him in us. Live a blameless life. First Thessalonians 5.23 Be about your heavenly father's business and win souls to Jesus. Forgive and be forgiven. He said, you know, Jesus said, you, you know, you have to forgive so that you shall be forgiven. That's Matthew 6, 14, uh, 15. Seek to cultivate a life centered on Christ, eagerly waiting his return. Cultivate a vibrant prayer life. Get your priorities life. Don't allow the cares of this world and anything to distance you from maintaining a close relationship with him. 
Let us look at uh, 12. Can you please give us uh, Luke 12, 44 to 48? And truth, I mean, because one, truly I say to you, make um, to you that he will make him ruler over all that he has. But if that servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming, and begins to beat the male and female servants, and to eat and drink and be drunk, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him, and at an hour when he is not away, and will cut him in two, and appoint in his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant who knew his master's will and did not prepare himself or do according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. But he who did not know yet committed things deserving of stripes shall be beaten with few. For everyone to whom much is given, from him much will be required. And to whom much has been committed, of him they will ask for more. So, you know, when we said we're waiting for Jesus Christ, uh, the coming of the Lord, we don't know when he will be coming. So, uh, I will repent tomorrow. I will confess my sin today. That person that I'm keeping my list with, okay. Now, that's why I'm saying that it's for us believers who should be prepared. We, because we already know him. We know his words. And we know that our ultimate is to reign with him, to go to, uh, glo to, uh, to reign with him in glory when he comes back, or some that will be dead by then, because they said when Jesus Christ died, some people that uh, uh, died uh, were already dead long time in the history. Some of them arose. So that means that, and the Bible already said it, that you know, those that will first come up, yeah, the, first, the people that died in Christ. So it's real. Jesus Christ will never lie about anything. The truth he says. So we are servants. We should be ready because we don't know the day when it's coming. We don't. Whatever we are doing that is not good, it will be very disastrous. I said it at the beginning because some people are just coming in that. It will be very sad to go to the same place with Boko Haram, with ISIS, with everyone because of lying. Because of I hate this person's face. It's not worth it. In heaven, nobody is going to be settling correct. It's a time of singing and dancing. So no time for anybody who oh, crush my leg, touch my face, does not like me. No. We should be focused as Christians, as believers. So, and I know that God Almighty will help us. Amen. We are trying our best in House of Change. I don't know individual slide, but I know God will help us because we are making efforts. Please keep on making more efforts. God will help us in Jesus' name. So let us pray now. Prayer number one. Let us thank God. Oh, oh, the prayer is, oh Lord, we thank you for the glorious eternity you are going to prepare for the faithful and watchful believers. Let's begin to pray. Father, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, oh Lord, we thank you, oh Lord. For the glorious eternity, it's everlasting. You say where you will be, that is where we are going to be. Father, we thank you because we have gone ahead to prepare a place for us. Oh, Lord, we thank you. It's going to be for faithful and watchful believers, not believers who uh, falling by the wayside. Father, we are thanking you. We are grateful, oh, Lord. Be that exalted, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the eternity that you have prepared for us. We are grateful. Thank you, Father, Lord. Be that glorified, be that honor, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. And number two, Father, I receive empowering and keeping grace to end up my race with you in your everlasting kingdom, the kingdom of righteousness. Father, in the name, name of the Lord, I receive empowering and keeping grace to end up my race with you in your everlasting kingdom. Oh, Lord, I receive the empowering. It's only you who can empower me, O oh Lord. Father, empower me. O oh Lord, give me the keeping grace to end up my race with you in your everlasting kingdom. Father, I don't want to fall by the wayside. 
I don't want to be called me a child of perdition. Oh, Lord, I just received the empowering gifts. Keep me, oh, Lord, to end up my race with you in your everlasting kingdom, in the kingdom of righteousness. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Father, deliver me from walking in the path of the foolish virgins. Help me to settle anything that can spoil my chance of ending up my race with you in heaven. Let's begin to pray. Father, deliver me from walking in the path of the foolish virgins. Help me to settle anything that can spoil my chance of ending up my race with you in heaven. Father, help me, O Lord. Deliver me from walking in the path of foolish virgins. Help me to settle in the name of the anything, anything that can spoil my chance of ending up my race with you in heaven. Oh, Lord, help me, oh, Lord. Ah, Father, help me in my heart, in my thoughts, in my walk with you, in my actions. Oh, Lord, help me to settle anything that can make me not to see you in glory, oh, Lord. Help me in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Uh, prayer number four. Father, help me to overcome any hidden weakness or besetting sin that can close the door of eternity against me. Yes, I, I hope you guys know the meaning of besetting. You know, the, the sin that is like is already embedded in us. Or you repent today, you go back to that sin tomorrow. And I think uh, the, I watched one movie, it was something about all these Catholic people. And somebody would go to the father every day. Father, I, I fornicated yesterday. Go in peace. Your sin is forgiven. One day the father said, your sin perish with you. <laughs> was tired of hearing this said sin every time. You repent, you go back to you repent, you go back to it. You look at King David. In spite of everything he did, God called him a man after his heart because he never repeated one sin twice. So if we have been doing it, God, we need that, we need that strength and the prayer to say, take it away from me. You know, we need to, God needs to take it away from us, gossiping, saying things that you're not supposed to say. Oh, my God. God will help us. <laughs> so let us begin to pray now. Oh Father, Father, help me to overcome my weakness or be setting sin that can close the door of eternity against me. Father, help me. Help me. Help me, oh, Lord. Help me, oh, Lord. Give me the strength ah, to deal with the weakness or be setting sin. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, help me, O oh Lord. Help me, O oh Lord. Help me, O oh Lord. I don't want. I, I, I don't want to go into perdition. Take it away from me. Every spirit of anger in my life, O oh Lord, take it away from me. Ah, Baba, O oh Lord, every spirit of bitterness. Ah, Baba, take it away from me. Every weakness in me, O oh Lord, strengthen me. Strengthen me, O oh Lord. Empower me to deal with any weaknesses or besetting sin that can close the door of eternity against me. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh Lord, release upon number five. Oh Lord, release upon me the winning grace or the overcoming power that was upon the five wise virgins. We hold me from ever putting my hand on anything that can disqualify me. Let's begin to pray. Father, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, release upon me the winning grace and the overcoming power. That was upon the five wise virgins. We hold me from ever putting my hand on anything that can disqualify me. Father Lord, give me that assurance. Help me to be prepared. The five wedges were prepared. They were prepared. Father Lord, let not the oil in my lamp, let it not dry out. In the name of the Lord Jesus, oh Lord, we told me from ever putting my hands on anything that can disqualify me. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, everything we own in this world is going to end in this world. Oh, Lord, let those things of this world ah, keep me down here in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, help me to be like the five virgins, ready, ready, ready in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ah, Father, help me not to put my hand ever on anything that can disqualify me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I just bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Number six now, Heavenly Father. Making holy, steadfast, and ready for heaven, either in death or rapture. Amen. Father, make me holy. Hmm. No unholy person shall see God. No unrighteousness will see God. Oh, Lord, Heavenly Father, make me holy. 
Make me to be steadfast. Let me not look by the right, by the left. Let me stay with you, O Lord, till the end, either in death or in rapture. Let me be by your side. O Lord, help me to be ready. Holy Spirit, make me holy. Help me, Holy Spirit, that I'll be holy. I'll be steadfast. I'll be ready for heaven. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now, number seven. Father, in my journey to greatness in life, don't let, allow me to go careless or be distracted by any form of distractions in the world today. Amen. You see, this prayer is very important because people will do anything through crook or uh, by crook or by anything to make it because they needed everything. Okay, how do you explain a human being, a mother, killing another person's daughter and removing the heart? And you and your son, you cook it, you eat it, so that you, your son can become rich. You say, okay, later you go and repent and say, <laughs> even the Bible said it, that even hands join in hands, no sinner shall go unpunished. So why would somebody do that? Because they want to be great at all costs, at all costs. Oh, this money, I want it, I want it. I've never seen anybody that, I, 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 they say it, but I've never seen somebody that did ritual for money that is rich. It's all lies. It's all lies. It's not true. They just waste human beings. They waste effort. If that person became rich, it's because God has destined, destined him to be rich. And the only thing was Satan just did to put mark upon him that you, you are mine. So, as Christians, let us not buy any crook or any means that, oh, I just have to be rich. No, that is not our own portion. We cannot cut corners. We have to work hard, God, asking for God's blessing. Like this is the year of our turnaround, and things shall turn around well for us in Jesus' name. Amen. But there is no shortcuts, hard work, blessing of God. All those things are the things that we need. Okay, now let's pray the prayer now. Father, in my journey to greatness in life, don't allow me to grow careless or be distracted by any form of distraction in the world today. Father, ah, it's good to go into greatness, oh Lord, because you are the one that lifts up. You are the one that puts down. Oh, Lord, I pray that in my journey to greatness in life, don't allow me to grow careless or be distracted by any form of distraction in the world today. Oh, Lord, help me, oh, Lord. Don't allow me to grow careless or be distracted by any form of distraction. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, don't let me grow careless. Don't let me be distracted. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, help me, Father, Lord. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, help me, oh, Lord, that I will not be distracted. That, oh, this thing, I must get it. By force, by force. I must be rich. By fire, by force. Oh, Lord, let it be from you. It's your blessing that make it rich and add no sorrow to it. Father, Lord, in my journey to greatness in life, don't allow me to grow careless or be distracted by any form of distraction in the world today. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Number eight. Father, deliver me and my family for anything that cause backsliding of any kind. The, uh, uh, Proverbs 14, 14 says, a backslider in heart will be filled with his own ways, but a good man will be satisfied from above. You know what a backslider is. Oh, already I'm born again. It's settled. Let me just go and do what they're doing in the world to make it. Then I'll come back. So you'll bring big tides. I'll bring giant tides. No, God doesn't want things like that. You're just wasting your time. So, and because you, you, you're not going to be filled with satisfaction, your conscience will always tell you what you've done that is not right. So, let us not backslide in our hearts. Let us follow God and be satisfied with our God. So, let's begin to pray that Father, deliver me and my family from anything that can cause backsliding of any kind. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, anything in my life that can cause me to backslide, Oh Lord, let me be my portion in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Oh Lord, deliver me. Deliver me. Deliver me. Deliver me from every spirit of backsliding in my heart, even in my actions. Oh Lord, physically or spiritually. Father, I don't want to be a backslider. Help me, oh Lord. Help me, oh Lord. Help me, oh Lord. Because I want that satisfaction from above in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Help me, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, number nine, Father, sustain me by your power every moment of the day. Do not allow anything 
from any quarter to defy the eternity that you have set in my heart. So, like I uh, said, Ecclesiastes 3 11, he said, He has made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has put eternity in their heart, except that no one can find out the work that God does from the beginning. Yes, it is of God. God has put it in us that eternity, we need to even struggle and make sure that we get it. Nobody wants to be defiled. So we need to pray that anything that is going to defile us from making this eternity, oh Lord, take it from us, and we want it to be in our heart. Every day we should think about it, our eternity, our heart, because we're going to spend more time in eternity than here. So we should be conscious of it. Now let's begin to pray. Right, let's sustain me by your power every moment of the day. Do not allow anything from any quarters to define the eternity that you have set in my heart. Oh Lord, sustain me. Sustain me, Father Lord. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Oh Lord, sustain me. Sustain me, Father. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Oh Lord, sustain me. That nothing will defy the eternity that is in my heart. Lord, you have set it in my heart and I will maintain it. Oh Lord, by you sustain me by your power. Every moment of the day. Do not anything from any quarter. Defy the eternity that you have set in my hand. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Number 10. Oh Lord, give me complete and continuous victory over sin. Every day of my life. So that any time you come, I'll be fit to reign with you. In the near Philip. Okay. So let us begin to pray. That we have victory over sin, every form of sin. In the name of the Lord, oh Lord, give me complete and continuous victory over sin every day of my life. So that any time you come, I'll be fit to reign with you. Oh Lord, I just pray that you give me that. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, give me so that I can reign with you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh Lord. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, help me. Mm-hmm. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That I am my brain with you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we are prayed. I look at um, um, Philippians 12, um, 2 verse 12 for that prayer. That therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only. Because when we say the Bible, ah, how are you, sir? I know, sir. Earlier than that, <laughs> when you get to uh, what they call it, liberty by the library, you start, start manifesting. So, you say, therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and with trembling. It's not when we are together, when nobody is looking at us in the corner. That's when we, we need to look at self. We have the mirror. We know ourselves. God will help us in Jesus' name. Now, number 11. Father, many calling secrecy, unconfessing, unconfessing, insecticing, unforgiving, bitterly, and lost. Amen. 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 So I put it here that add any of your own weakness to the list and present them before God. And you can, you can asterisk it so that we get, get home in your closet. Things that you cannot say out here in the church. You can say it before God. He understands. So now let us begin to pray their prayer. Father, don't allow my life to be characterized with any of the following sacred sins. Unconfessing, unconquering, besetting sin, unforgiveness, bitterness, and lust of any kind. In the mighty name of the Lord, your Father, don't allow my life to be characterized with any of the following secret sin. Unconfessing, unconquering, ah, any besetting sin in my life. Oh Lord, help me. Unforgiveness, bitterness, anger, lust, anything in my life. Oh Lord, ah. All those times that I have fallen by the wayside, oh Lord, oh Lord, have mercy upon me. I don't want my life to be characterized by it. Oh Lord, help me to confess that I will not continue in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ah, I want to make heaven, Lord, that I don't want to be here. Oh Lord, help me. Don't let my life be characterized by all these things. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Number 12. Um, the coming of Jesus is a purifying hope to everyone that is looking for his coming. So, and I have uh, First John 2 to 3. Can you give me first John chapter three, verse two? Okay. So beloved, we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. So it's, it's time of purification. We need to purify ourselves. And, uh, and we know what to do to make sure that uh, we are pure. Because our God is God of holiness. He is in the light. He cannot stand with uh, any dirtiness or any uh, thing that is not of him. So we have to purify ourselves. We have to purge ourselves so that we'll be fit to come to the presence of God to be pure and to be on the fire vessel in the name of the Lord Jesus. So let's just begin to pray uh, in, the name, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay, and uh, they come in the, uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, make me a pure and undefined vessel till I stand before you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, make me a pure and undefined vessel. Is there any way that I've defined myself, oh Lord? Oh Lord, purge me. Purge me, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, purify me, Lord. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, oh Lord, purge me. Purge me. Pour me, Father, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If there's any way that I have defied myself, Father, help me. Help me, Lord, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help me so that I'll be a vessel that will be good enough to stand in your presence in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, number 13. Uh, please kindly give me um, Mark 9, 43 to 48. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed rather than having two hands to go to hell into the fire that shall never be quenched. Their worms does not die. And the fire is not quenched. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It's better for you to enter life main rather than having two feet to be cast into hell. Into fire that does not quench. Where worms does not die and the fire is not quenched. And if your eyes causes you to sin, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with uh, one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire where uh, worms does die, does not die, and the fire does. Not. If you look at this, they said uh, your hand. The first thing in forty three says your hand, cut it off. Your foot, the one that will take you to that place where you're going to commit your sin. He said it's whether you are lame, cut it off too. He said your eyes, pluck it out. The eyes that you're using, because the first thing before you do something is the eyes that your sight. The attraction comes through your sight. Then you con it goes into your brain. So, it's, and the thing start manifesting. You start dwelling on it, dwelling on it. Can I have it? Do I not have it? Do I do it? Then you carry your two legs straight into the place, and you use your hand. So, it might be symbolic, but in real life, physically, that is the truth. It is your eyes that you will see, and you see somebody just hit that person in your heart for no reason. So, we are going to pray 
that, oh Lord, empower me with grace to radically, don't forget the meaning of radically that we said over there, over there, that totally, thoroughly change, you know, to radically separate myself from anything that is wrong, worldly, sinful, and contaminating. Now let's begin to pray. And in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, empower me with the grace to radically separate myself from anything that is wrong, worldly, sinful, and contaminating. Oh, Lord, help me, Father. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, empower me with the grace to radically separate myself from anything that is wrong, from anything that is worldly, from anything that is sinful, from anything that is contaminating. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, help me, Father. Oh, Lord, help me, Father. Oh, Lord, help me, Father. Oh, Lord, help me, Father, to radically separate myself from all those things, Lord. In, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, uh, number 14, Father, grant me your enduring and overcoming grace to patiently endure any difficulty or trial that may come my way in this journey of life. You see, um, this prayer is very, very important because... Uh, um, I don't know, I'm going to interpret it in English, but it's a, and it's just about, see, you know, <laughs> you've not seen, um, I don't know. Okay, you might be, bo you might be boasting. <laughs> I can fight, I can fight. When you see a real champion, you will just, <laughs> you will look for a style to say, okay, let the other one do their own rant. You disappear quickly. When there are things that will happen that people will compromise their faith. So that is why we are praying this prayer. We need that grace. That grace in our hearts. That no matter, no, no matter what. I look at uh, something on Facebook. I told them to stop sending horrible things to me. There was this young girl in Afghanistan. She went to follow a friend to Bible study. Her own mother, ah, her own mother, pull her, tore her clothes. Somebody, a daddy person, that is like this, my brother, I'm sorry, used his leg to hit him. I think his, that girl's neck must have broken. And she, right, she was there, they pour something on her. The pour uh, uh, incineration, I don't know if that is petrol. Or get, they pour, this girl burns to ashes. Her mom was there. They call it honor killing. Now, how do you, that nobody is chasing us here, we're going to start with that girl. Anytime I remember, I always want to cry because that picture never left my brain. And it always helped me. How is Jesus Christ going to judge using that girl and myself on the day of judgment? You understand what I'm saying? That this is girl who has no sin. They just took her there. Either she believed or she didn't believe. Young girl. She cannot be more than 11. They told ah, no, no, no. That the first time that I watched everything to the end. Because I was crying. That's uh, every time it comes to my brain. Here is a girl. All what she did was follow them to that place. Either she believed or she didn't believe. And they said, what did you go to do there? Before you know, they were speaking their language and everything. And... It doesn't take five minutes, she was already ashes. So now we're taking our Christianity lightly here because we have everything that God has made it possible. God will surely help us. Amen. So we are going to pray that prayer 14. Father, grant me your angel. Oh, okay. I think we already prayed that one. No, let's pray it now. Father, grant me your enduring and overcoming grace to endure any difficulty, any trial that may come my way in this journey of life. Any difficulty, no matter how tough it is, let your hand strengthen me, O oh Lord. Ah, give me the overcoming grace, Baba, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I cannot do this journey alone. Lord Jesus, don't leave me alone. Holy Spirit, help me. So that I have the overcoming grace to wait patiently to endure any difficulty, any trial that may come my way in this journey of life. Oh, Lord, help every one of us. Help us in house of change, Lord, that we'll be able to stay with it patiently and endure it. 
In the name of the Lord Jesus, in Jesus' name we pray. Oh Lord, help me to hold fast to the whole truth of the gospel. The gospel is true. Oh God, help me to hold to it. That I will not go and listen to any charlatans anyway. That the gospel is true. It's true here. It's in preach here. It's true here in our church. It's true in gospel faith mission. So let us now pray that God will help us to hold fast to the whole truth. Nothing but the truth. In Jesus' name. Number 15. Oh Lord. Help me to hold fast to the old truth of the gospel in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh Lord, help me to hold fast to the old truth of the gospel in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let me dwell upon it day and night. Let me study it day and night. Let me hold it day and night. All the days of my life, Lord, let me live the gospel. Let me live the life of the gospel every minute, every day in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help me, oh Lord, in Jesus' name we are afraid. Number 16. Oh Lord, Help me to read the Bible, believe the Bible, obey the Bible, and treasure the Bible every day of my life. Let us begin to pray. Oh, Lord, help me to read your word. Your word is true. Let me believe. Hmm. I believe, oh, Lord. Let me obey everything. Give me that enablement to obey the Bible. Let me treasure the Bible. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, help me to obey it. Help me to treasure it. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, help me to treasure it. In the name of the Lord Jesus, help me, O oh Lord, to obey the Bible, to treasure the Bible every day of my life. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Number 17. Father, help me to be occupied with so winning in the order of the great commission. Amen. Most Christians, 95%, are guilty of this. 95 I'm just using Christian worldwide. Believers, we are not winning so. If you ask me, how many so did I win last year? Is it this year and come? God's going to help me. And same thing with everybody. You know, you know the most important thing is to tell somebody. One day, you will just see them. Oh, somebody, something will happen that you just see them, they just walk. Just plant it there and leave the rest for the Holy Spirit. To begin to water and germinate it. God will surely help us in Jesus' name. So let's pray 17. Father, help me to be occupied with so winning. In the order of the great commission. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, help me to be occupied with so winning. Help me to win so for you. That is the greatest commission that you left for us. Oh Lord, help me to win so for you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody preached to me. I was a nominal Christian. Somebody came every time, every time. And I said, okay, I will come. And that's it. Oh, Lord, help me to, to win soul. Help me to, to minister to somebody. Help me to, to, help, to go after some people, to win soul. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, help me to be occupied with soul winning. In the order of the Great Commission. In Jesus' name we pray. Number 18. Father, help me to watch and pray every day of my life. Let's begin to pray now. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I, oh Lord, help me to watch and pray. Help me to watch and pray. Help me to watch and pray every day of my life. Help me to watch and pray, Father, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. I, oh Lord, my God, help me to watch and pray. Help me to watch and pray. Help me to watch and pray. Let me be aware that Jesus Christ might come when I'm, I least expect it. Let it not be when I'm cursing or I'm angry. Oh Lord, help me. Help me to watch and pray. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Now number 19. Now let's pray. Lord, empower me to walk in love. Loving you more dearly and loving all people. Amen. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, help me to walk in love. In the name of the Lord, empower me to walk in love. To live in love. To love you. You said, if, if we love you, then we will love each other. And that is your greatest command, that we love one another as you have loved us. If you don't love us, you won't give your life for us. You won't die for us. Oh, Lord, we just pray that, Lord, help me to walk in love, loving you more dearly, loving all people. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, help me, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. 
and there, they said the emphasis and prayer. Heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. Prepare me for your coming and use me to prepare others for your unique coming. May God help us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for how you have used your servant to bless us this morning. Be exalted, O God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless her richly. Amen. Bless her richly. Amen. Increase your grace on her life. Amen. Let it be well with her, Lord. Amen. Continue to use her as a vessel unto honor in your hand. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you. Mr. Abigail, that was a very, very powerful one. Thank you. Thank you. We, we are so blessed in this house. I tell you, we are really, really blessed in this house. And all of you are ministers, and you're doing so greatly. Thank you. Thank you for allowing yourself to be used by the Lord. Um, that prayer number 17. I have a few prayer points that I want us to, to pray together today. That prayer number 17, as we were praying it, I remembered something, and I was ashamed of myself. My wife and I traveled to Nigeria last month for my dad's funeral. Then both of us went to my barber to have a haircut. So she accompanied me. So I was discussing with my barber, and he had been my barber for several years, right? Since 2001. So that should be like uh, 18 years, okay? The same barber. They were four in that shop. My son on social media that one of them was going to christen his uh, new baby in a church. And I knew all of them to be Muslims. All of them Muslims, staunch Muslims. So staunch that when you look at uh, the forehead, you see the mark. Uh -huh. So I asked my Baba, I said, ah, this man, his name is baby in the church. I said, yes. I said, why? He said, he's a Christian now. I said, hey, my wife and I, we say, yeah, praise God. Praise. Really, really, we were surprised. I asked for the other person, what about him? He said, he's a Christian too. Ah, really? He said, yes, praise God. And I mentioned the third person. He said, he's a Christian too. He said, you don't mean it. He said, oh, they are Christians. Ah, and I now told him, I said, hey, hey, you are the next. You are the only one that is left. You must be a believer now. You must believe Jesus. You must get saved and so on. You know, as we were praying this prayer, Father, help me to be occupied with soul winning in, order, in the order of the Great Commission. I remembered that day, and I was ashamed of myself. This person was my baba. These four people, all right, in the same shop, right? They were my barbers for at least eight years. And I never witnessed Christ to them once. What if they had died? No. I, I will confess my sin to you. I mean, yeah. What if any of them had died? and had gone to a Christless eternity. I would have said, oh, sorry, oh, may God be with his family. But in actual fact, heaven will say, for you pastoring him, you did not even give him one chance to accept Jesus. How many people here today are also in my shoes? So I have to bring it home. I just confessed my sin to you. As I was praying, I was ashamed of myself. I said, God, 
Ah, I'm sorry. But God loved them. He loved them beyond my carelessness. He loved them beyond my selfishness. All I cared about was, cut my hair, get your money, I get out. God saw beyond that. My people, the prayer points of this year's victory month, I can, I, as you can see, they are beyond bread and butter. Give me, give me, give me, give me more money, more dollar. Give me. Uh, these are prayer points. Whatever touches the heart of God should also touch us. If throughout last year you did not win a soul to the Lord, shame on you. Ah, see, Pastor, Pastor, he saw me no. Yeah. I just confess my sin as well. If throughout 2019, you didn't win if just one, one upon all the blessing of God to you. It's a big shame. If in 2020 you don't even have any plan to win any soul for Christ, you have drawn your vision, your, you know, your goals, your plans, everything's in place, and there is even not one line to say, oh God, help me to be a soul winner. And that's a problem. I'm going to ask you, my people, Let's go back home. Let's think home. If we don't win souls, God sees us as people who have taken his grace in vain. Let's go and work on it. It's very important, very cool. It's very serious. It's a very serious thing. Okay? How will God bless you and bless you and bless you and bless you and just ask you for a few souls and say it is too difficult? Why then did he bless you? God will have mercy. How many people will take a step on this? He will help us. The prayer I'm going to ask us to pray today. If you remember in Genesis chapter 4, Something happened there between Abel and Cain. The older brother was jealous of the younger brother. You know the story. He killed him. God came around. God said, Cain, where is your brother Abel? He said, am I my brother's keeper? Leave me alone. And God said, ha. His blood is crying out for vengeance. I said, because of this one that you did, ah, you're going to be a vagabond, a wanderer on the face of the earth. And Cain answered to God, said, ha, this punishment is too big for me. Anyone who sees me will kill me. God said, eh, all right. So they will not kill you. I put a mark on you. Anyone who sees you will see that mark. If they still go ahead and kill you, I will multiply their suffering by 10. Multiple of your suffering is what I will give them. So from the, from the word of God, we see that nobody killed Cain because they were afraid that God was going to visit a bigger punishment on them. They saw the mark of God on Cain. Now give me Galatians 6 verse 17. And this is the prayer you are going to pray right now. If God said, hey, everybody let's read the scripture. I, I like to read comprehension passages properly. I like to read to understand. The first line said what? Meaning, I don't care what has happened from the time I was born till now. Mm, that one is okay. It's gone. 
But from this moment, henceforth, anybody may have troubled me. That's okay. Anybody may have tampered with my children. That's okay. But from now on, let no one trouble me. Because there is something I'm bearing on my body. And that's what the marks of God. People saw the mark of God on Cain. They left him alone. And it was a negative mark. They left him alone. How much more? The mark of God. The marks of the blood of Jesus. It is the mark of Jesus on you that makes your life tamper proof for powers of wickedness. For example, I don't know where my first son is right now. Now, 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 I don't know. Where my other son is now. I just know they have gone to school. Where they are in school, I don't know. Where your children are right now, do you know? You, what they are doing now, do you know? You don't know. But once you put the mark of God on them, you can go and sleep with your two eyes closed. This is the prayer we want to pray today. By faith, you want to receive the mark of the Lord Jesus on you and on every member of your family. Please rise. See, we are setting the tone for year 2020 with our prayer. People do say, the leap years are usually tough and terrible years. They say so. All right? And they may have their reasons. Okay? Well, this leap year will be a phenomenal year for you. Amen. You are going to pray to the Almighty God. Father, put your mark on me. You will mention your name, mention every member of your family by name. Oh God, put your mark on us for total protection from every force of darkness, every power of wickedness this year. Put your mark on me in the name of Jesus. Now open your mouth and pray. Pray, pray, pray. In Jesus' name we pray. This is not my idea of prayer. Sincerely, this is not my idea of prayer. One of our pastors, I preached for him last year. All right. He finished a conference in Ibadan. He was going to Lagos. I told you the story. He was in this uh, public transport and then could be 16 seater bus. They were going to Lagos and suddenly a trailer that was coming in the opposite direction lost its brakes and came straight at them and drove into them. All right. At the point of impact, the only thing this pastor was able to remember was that he called Jesus. He immediately he called the name of Jesus. Where he sat in the bus, okay, immediately a hole was carved in the floor of, uh, of the bus. In, and then, you know, he fell down as he dropped, as it were. The trailer ran over the bus and killed everybody. This uh, pastor only had a fracture. He was the only one who hobbled out of the accident scene. The only one. Why? Mark. I'm asking you to pray. See. Don't pray sinner's prayer. Don't pray sinner's prayer. I'm asking you to secure the life of every member of your family. Ah. Oh God, put your mark on me. Put your mark on my children against every evil, against every act of wickedness this year. I will not suffer the consequences of wickedness this year. Put your mark on me and my entire household in the name of Jesus. My life will not be lost to accident. The road will not suck my blood. In the name of Jesus, put your mark on me. Put your mark on every member of my household in year 2020. In the name of Jesus, 
put your touch not mark on me and my family members this year in the name of Jesus. Everywhere we go, let the mark of Jesus be visible. Let the mark of Jesus stand out on us in the name of Jesus. Mark of rescue, mark of protection, mark of divine defense, mark of security in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, according to your word, no evil will befall me. No plague will come near my dwelling. Put your mark on me. Put your mark on my wife. Put your mark on my children. Put your mark on every member of my household. In the name of Jesus. Anyone that evil will happen to and they will call me. My Lord, put your mark on them. Don't let evil happen to them this year. In the name of Jesus. Any call, phone call that I will receive. That will disorganize my peace. That I will lose my peace. Oh God, put your mark on such people. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Put your mark, your mark, your mark. Touch your mark on me and my household this year. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Uh -huh. We are praying. It was that same mark that God, in Exodus chapter 12, asked the children of Israel to put on the lintel and doorpost of their houses. God said, because definitely the angel of destruction will pass through the land. Don't deceive yourself. The angel of destruction is passing through every land. Don't deceive yourself. He said, but when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Why don't you ask God once again? It is the blood of Jesus that confers the mark of positive exceptions on you. Meaning, it may happen to others, but not me. Because my case is different. Because I bear in my body the mark of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are going to pray to the Almighty God. My case shall be, you know, shall be different this year. Disaster will not know my house. Calamity will not know my address. Evil will not befall any member of my family this year. In the mighty name of Jesus, pray to the Almighty God. Let the mark of the blood of Jesus be upon me and every member of my family this year. In the name of Jesus. The same way that the blood... Marked the houses of the children of Israel in Goshen, and the angel of destruction passed over them. Lord, I pray, let the mark of Jesus be on me this year. Let it be on me this year. Evil will pass over me. Calamity will pass over me. Accident will pass over me. Sudden death will pass over me. Will pass over my children, pass over my husband, pass over my wife, pass over all my loved ones. Pass over every member and family in House of Change this year. In the name of Jesus. 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 Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. One or two more prayer points. Are you willing to pray? The mark also, you see, as it protects, the mark of the blood of Jesus also confers favor. Amen. Favor. Again, my wife and I, you know, when we traveled last uh, last month, uh, my sister Moloni were with us. And got to the counter there. They asked us to weigh our bags. Okay, the checking bags were okay, but then the 
carry on bags. Ah, my own was overweight. Our own was overweight. And they were going to charge us $100, I guess, $200 per bag. And then the woman said, um, okay, check in one of them free. I didn't beg her. I didn't uh, check it free. Then you can take this one in. Really? Say, if they ask you, <laughs> thank God you were there. Say, if they ask you, why do you have a heavy, tell them that it is you and your wife that have this one. For this, I check it free. You know something? That was not the first time. That was not the first time. Every bless, blessed time, every time, every time. And then we got to Nigeria, and the queue was out of this world. Oh, my God. The queue, if we were to go on the queue, maybe we would be number 200, maybe, my wife and I. And all of a sudden, somebody just stood in front of me and looked at my wife and said, you, stay this way. Uh, you, are you both together? Said, yes. Said, go there. And the queue, he asked us to join. Maybe we were number four or number five. We didn't beg him. We didn't do anything. I told you about three years ago. I was coming back to the U.S. I was already at the departure lounge. Huh. The customer at Taiwo Park will please report to the desk. And I go there. I said, let's have your boarding pass. And I gave them. They gave me another one. And I looked at it, I saw business class there. I said, ha, business class? I said, what's happening? I said, that's uh, the instruction I received from above. I said, who is that one above? I said, are you not interested? I took the one first, I put it in my pocket. <laughs> and we can now talk. <laughs> Before they changed their mind. <laughs> I put it in my pocket and I started to ask. Again, that was not the first time. After a while. He did it look at me and say, Are you a pastor? I said, Why did you? I said, There is something different about you. I want you to ask God. Favor eliminates labor. Ah. What I'm asking you to do is real. The reason why you argue with it is because it has not happened to you before. That's why you argue. That's why it is not real to you. Once it begins to happen to you now, you will know. I tell you. Ha. Ah. Oh, God, put your mark of divine favor on me, on my children. Everywhere my children appear, let help appear for them. Let people favor them. Let people go out of their way to help me, to help my children. In the name of Jesus. This year, I will not be stranded. This year, I will not be helpless. This year, you will send help to me. By the mark of Jesus that you put on me, help will be always be available for me. Pray in the name of Jesus. Pray, pray, pray in the name of Jesus. God still helps his children. God still favors his children. Oh God, put your mark on me. In the name of Jesus, your mark of divine favor. Let you follow me everywhere I go this year. In the name of Jesus, wherever I used to struggle before. Father, I pray, remove struggle from my life. Remove struggle from my life. My children must no longer struggle. Almighty God, I pray, send help to us. Put the mark of divine favor on us. As from now, in the name of Jesus. As from now, in the name of Jesus. Put your mark on us for divine favor, for divine assistance. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Tomorrow, if Jesus has not come, I will ask us to pray for divine guidance and direction Amen. tomorrow. Specific instructions from God that will lead you to where your goodness is. Amen. Look, it is real. Amen. Thank God my wife is here. There was a time, I said, God, I need money. I said, okay. And the next morning, which was a Sunday, she will remember now. 
she was uh, in the bathroom. We were getting ready for church. I think I was brushing my teeth when God said, go into this particular gray suit. Check the inner pocket. Because I woke up that morning with no, I didn't have any money. And I went there, dip my hand in the pocket, and there it was. So I, never, I took it myself. Come and see. Ha! I counted it. $1,500. God still, he still gives instruction specific. Spe you say, go here. And you go there, you find it there. That's what we're going to be praying about tomorrow. Mm. This year, you will not walk aimlessly. Yeah. Yeah. This year, you will not waste your effort. Mm -hmm. He said, you will hear a voice behind you telling you, this is the way. We tell you this. People may say it is bush. God will say, mm -mm, this is the go. I say this is the way. Yeah. There are some of you that God will be directing to start a particular business this year. You will hear God's voice. Yeah. That's the prayer for tomorrow. Father, we thank you. Bless our offering, oh God. Bless us richly. Let it be well with us in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please let's have our seat and let's drop our offering. God is good. We give thanks to God for this morning's prayer. It's getting sweeter and better every day, you know. Sister Abigail, that was a very beautiful one. God bless you, man. Thank you so much. Prayer continues this evening at 7 o'clock and tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Please, let's bear it in mind. Um, we have two testimonies. <laughs>